Hello there guys, it's me Unstable Voltage. Welcome to what I think is now episode 8 of Europa Universalis for Asming. We are playing with the new Mandate of Heaven DLC. And it's all a bit new for me because obviously not only am I playing a new DLC, I'm playing as Ming, which I've never done before. So it's a, it's an interesting concept with all of these vassals. Uh, Myong Yang, who I stopped being a tributary because I wanted to attack them, um, they've got a, a lot of land now because they took some of this land from um, Sarayoga. So it'd be nice to take that from them. I'm sure we can beat them up. Uh, Ziren. The rule of the Great Empire is, for, uh, is the foremost responsibility and privilege of the Emperor. The Zhu have, in the past, prided themselves on leading through example, observing strict etiquette, personal austerity, and carefully wedding out those that do not conform to this ideal. It is therefore with a heavy heart that Kizan has observed the development of Q. Far from an ideal man, our Imperial heir is often described by his teachers as a petty person focused on immediate gain and emotional pleasures. There are, however, factions at court that would be most dismayed if we abandoned Q. Uh, air would not have their, a new heir would not have their support. So we could gain 10% harmony and lose a stability. And we'd get a noble with a 445 with a strong claim. And all of the, um, all of the, what are these things called? Words. Estates would lose a loyalty. Um, but a 445 is really, really good, considering that the heir currently is an embezzler, which improves corruption, and is a 112. The other option is to lose 10% harm. No, I think we've got to go for this one. Losing the stability sucks. Um, but getting a good heir is going to be absolutely uh, fantastic. Not in... in uh, with anything else, but we're going to go ahead and call this guy uh, William. We're starting naming people after Patreon uh, supporters. Uh, finally managed to convert heretics. It's decreased our harmony. Now, we don't know what your personality trait is yet, but we soon will. Are we going to do any more conversions? We're still trying to get this um, thing done here. It's on 78%. I think we'll hold off on some of the conversions for the time being. Um, you are a naive enthusiast, which reduces our improved relations. Well, I'd sooner it be that than the corruption, so that doesn't bother me too much. Now, it would be nice if we could get our next military tech before we went to war again. We are quite some ways off. We are gaining eight per month. At the current rate, we are still looking at almost three years before we can tech up. Military tech of five. You guys are on military tech of five. I guess we could take you. You are allied with Lenar and Arakan. Um, Arakan are here, getting sieged out by rebels. Uh, Lenar are down here and couldn't even pay us tribute with manpower last year, so they don't really have any manpower. So we could probably give all these guys a good kicking if we wanted to. I'm still a little bit concerned about some of the rebellions we've got here, and that's actually just reminded me. We should definitely go ahead and bump up these. Let's go to three, actually. Let's just go whole hog and bump it up, bump it right the way up to three. That'll help things out. Any buildings that we can and should build, we could get some workshops. Um, no, because we don't have the tech. We don't have the tech. Why bother even showing it? It doesn't make any sense. We don't have the tech. Is it because we could build it in somebody else's land? Maybe that's why. Um, so let's click on something that I know I can't build, like a workshop. If I include subjects... No, there aren't even any subjects where I can build it on, so that doesn't actually make any sense. Tributary State has declared war on the PAL, that is fine. How long is our truce with you, actually? It's probably going to be quite a long one. Somebody else might even take you out first. 82, so that's quite some time to wait. Uh, you're quite a small stack there. You're at only a 13k stack. What did I do to lose some men? Most of these stacks are like a 12-4. Did I leave some men somewhere that I can't see? No. I know that there's three extra men in, in this stack, but they're mercenaries. Uh, so let's go up to four with the cav and we'll give you two more infantry. I must have done a weird consolidate at some point, or I must have had a small stack that got um, it stack wiped and I hadn't noticed. So I would very much like to go and attack Myong Yang. Oh, we can have an extra leader without um, upkeep. Or is that Mongolia? I didn't read it properly. I did my usual thing of sort of skip reading. Yeah, so Mongolia can have an extra leader without upkeep. Well, good for them. 
Build a great palace. Monarchs were often struggling with ways to subdue the nobility. The rise of firearms reduced the no nobles' roles as warriors, but left them with, in the eyes of the monarchs, too much idle time. Some monarchs created uh, great new palaces with elaborate court rituals to dazzle the nobles and keep them occupied. Um, Versailles is the greatest expression of this movement. So uh, we can gain 10 prestige for 262 ducats, sure. Almost got max prestige now, which is really, really nice. And we have our first of many rebellions. Um, let's go and deal with the larger stack first, while we still have the maximum uh, number of men in this uh, in this stack here. Yeah, there's a few more that are liable to pop, but I think we really should be dealing with those before we worry too much about uh, attacking our neighbours. So, okay, we've got some years of separatism. That is going to be a problem. But it's not going to stop us from crushing you. Hopefully Mongolia can deal with all of their own stuff anyway. Yaren doesn't appear to have shrunk any. Japan hasn't changed too much. We've still got the um, Usugai controlling the majority of Japan over there. You have managed to engage. And we have got our good general here, so that should... Uh, we've got, you know, better, better stats across the board. You're unfortunately going to go over there and siege out another province, which I don't like. So what I'm going to do... Leave two regiments here, and then I'm just going to march the rest over there quickly. And try and take you out before you have the opportunity to uh, siege another province. We might just about get there in time. Looks like we've got yet another one. That's Mongolia's problem, really. Let's move you over there as well. Right, Mongolia, you don't have many troops. I appreciate that. So, who's closest? Probably you. Let's go ahead and put you in charge because you've got some... Um... Now we've just given this army attrition. So let's move you down into that province where you won't be getting any. And we'll go and help Mongolia out over here. So yeah, we should be able to... No, they are going to grab that one, which is unfortunate. But we'll go and make them pay for it. Mongolia's going to get some separatism here as well. But they don't have the troops to deal with it themselves. What we could do over here, actually... Is potentially make Mongolia into a march. So make Mongolia into a march and we can feed them stuff up here in the north and we'll concentrate on heading south and heading into towards India. That's what I want to go for here. Oh, that'll make Mongolia a lot stronger. It should also make them a fair bit happier as well. And you can always unmarch them later. It's not like it's impossible to do. So let's group you back up. This will also refresh the defended our provinces and... Um, Liberated our provinces, which is currently at plus 14, should also reset as well. I hope. Um, and it has gone back up to plus 25. Excellent. So let's get you down here. Uh, I notice these show red now when the agent is discovered. So it doesn't instantly disappear. So until um, the 3rd of January, 1471, our network will decay. It's actually quite good then that your spy doesn't automatically get kicked out and you forget and have to put them back in. They do stay there, they just get discovered and the, and the network starts going down. That's quite a cool little concept there. So how's manpower doing? It's been a long time since we've been anywhere near our manpower cap. And again, we have a... No, that wasn't the rebellion. We've got this rebellion over here. Well, you guys are closest, so I am going to march you straight in. We'll move in with you guys in case we do actually need a backup army over here. Maybe these guys can even get in before they have a chance to um, siege the province out. 31st of December, we might just, if we're lucky, yes, did arrive on time. Don't have our best general. I mean, we could, I could have swapped the generals around, I suppose, but we still won that battle anyway, so that is fine. 
Again, lost some men, which is unfortunate. There's still quite a few rebel, rebel factions that are threatening to pop. I would definitely like to go and attack Myung, Mong Yang, which I will do. Uh, we should, uh, for a start, I suppose, go ahead and at least get a claim somewhere. So let's go and work on um, Tichinlu, first of all. Let's go ahead and get that one. Yeah, I can see this being the sort of game where I end up with quite a large coalition against me by the end of it. So is that all of our overextension gotten rid of? No, not yet. We've got one more, uh, well, 4%, which will be done literally in a month. So we will have no overextension. We've got no war exhaustion, max stability. Um, we've got very little inflation. It's neither going up nor down. Which is fine. Okay, so there's all the overextension gone. More separatists. And quite handy for us. We've actually got guys right nearby. Um, Chang's Shang separatists. Uh, well, we don't know where you're actually going to pop, do we? Should have clicked on that first. So you are likely to pop in um, Lingyun. Which is all the way down there. So let's go ahead and move you down. Actually, we'll put you in there. As soon as we can, we'll swap that leader over. You're not going to be able to win this battle. We should get there in time. 28th of May. 7. Yep, just, just got there in time so that we didn't end up losing uh, a load of stuff. Excellent. And now we can move that um, leader over here. Apparently we can't because he's already assigned to an army. For some reason it won't let me change it. It should let me change it. I don't know why it isn't. There we go. Uh, it can intervene in wars. Do I want to get in with the Ottomans? I can join the Ottomans. I can come in on the side of the Ottomans. I can join the Ottomans, Tunis and Ardalan against Genoa, England, Aragon, Hungary, Austria, Venice, Florence, Brandenburg, Siena, Lucca, Anhalt, Naples, Corfu, Naxos. I'm going to go with no on that one. I think I'll stay out of that, to be honest. Uh, can purchase an ability. Your level of splendor is high enough to be able to purchase an ability. Excellent. So we can have reduced aggressive expansion impact. I think that's going to be very useful for us. Allow um, Allows transfer subject peace treaty at half cost. Uh, reduced war taxes cost. Cavalry to infantry ratio increased. High developed colonies. Adaptive to combat menacing terrain of capital. It's got to be reduced um, aggressive expansion impact. I was literally just saying about how we are likely to get coalitions against us. So being able to knock 10% off our aggressive expansion each time we take land. I think that is going to be a, a massive difference to us. You're taking attrition. Um, because even with the guy with maneuver you're not doing too great. Do we have a guy with better maneuver? Yes. Does that get rid of the attrition? No. Um, so in that case, let's go back and put you with the, the better combat guy. Let's move you into the neighboring province where you will be safer. And then let's just grab one of these other um, ones and give you that guy back. Interestingly enough, even though we lost our heir, he was replaced by another... Um, he is still... No, he isn't. I thought I was going to say, I think he is still available as a, um... A general. But I think he is. He is still available as a general now. But he's a pro an actual proper general. So we can go ahead and, um, assign him. He's got some maneuver. He's mainly fire, which isn't all that useful. But I don't think we've gone over our, uh, limit there, have we? Uh, no. We are still four of four, because we've got our, um... Our ruler, our emperor, who isn't actually leading an army. Uh, we do still have an army here that now has... Just can't win, can we? Just need somebody with manoeuvre. We'll put you in there. There we go. Just stop with the attrition for a while. I need to get some manpower back. So we're still making a decent amount of money. I don't even think I need to go and put the army maintenance down. Do we want to go up to a higher level advisor? We could get the trade efficiency guy. Let's go ahead and get the trade efficiency guy. We'll still make decent money and he'll pretty much pay for himself. How much are we paying for these advisors? 
yeah, six ducats monthly. They're as cheap as anything. Now, why did we get those again? Uh, minus 10% advisor cost. Because we're trading in tea. Seems a lot more than that. Are we also getting something from our idea groups? No? Interesting. Okay, so how far are we off from this tech? Not all that far, actually. Um, April. So we're literally just a few months away from being able to take the next military tech. Uh, we've still got potentially a couple of rebellions. Ah, what just happened? Was that our emperor dying? Our emperor did die. Which is unfortunate, but we now have a new emperor. Our new emperor allows us to repair the Great Wall. Let's go ahead and do it, because sure, why not? Uh, we still can't do this. Well, we, if we had stability of at least three, which we can do, and I think we should we should do this. Um, yeah, let's go ahead and do it. So we'll boost our stability. Right. Now we have the mission to construct the Forbidden City. It's going to cost us a thousand ducats and 50 admin power. But it reduces our stability cost and gives us yearly prestige until the end of the game. Excellent. Done. So we'll fall a little bit behind on admin for a while, but that'll be all right. Getting some royal marriage offers. Korea. Yeah, we'll probably keep that going. Uh, Jainzu, who is over here. here. Um, do we want to keep you around with that royal marriage? Or do I want to potentially use you as a target to attack? I don't think I'm going to accept that royal marriage. Mongolia, of course, we'd like to get a royal marriage with. No, I, don't, I still don't have any rivals, do I? No, we have no possible rivals. Emperor William I is not always easy to deal with. His thoughtless approach and total lack of discretion has offended many throughout the years. However, there is one group of people who appreciate William I's naive, naive, ugh, naivety. His advisors have realised that our emperor is easy to persuade and gets excited about almost any proposition. As they are so content we have been able to lower their salaries somewhat... It is not as if we haven't got plenty of brilliant candidates waiting in line. A little compensation will only make them work harder. Ming gets naive employer until the death of William I, giving an extra negative 10% uh, cost to advisors. Excellent. So now these guys should be even cheaper. Although they do seem to have gone up in cost for some reason. Maybe it was uh, my something my emperor had, but still. That should work out. Anyway... Military tech. Go ahead and grab the military tech. Now we can upgrade our um, cavalry. Uh, do we want the step cavalry or the samurai? Either way, we've got the same. The six six total pips. Um, six total pips either way. Let's go for the samurai. I don't bother min maxing all of the. Uh, Defensive pips and offensive pips. Rigorous researchers, academic institutions are not immune to corruption, and the profits that can be made by abusing positions of great influence can stand in the way of creating a good environment for research. However, Ming scientists are largely above this, focusing on genuine intellectual achievements above titles and financial contributions. The lack of corruption in society allows us to explore and invent without being impeded by selfish interests. The search for knowledge must be valued in itself. Gain 40 monarch points across the board. Very nice. Thank you very much. These rebellions don't look like they're going to go away anytime soon. It might be time to start thinking about jumping in here on Myongyang. Mongyang. So, we could get another claim. We've already got a claim here. Let's go and get a claim on Dege, or Deeg, or however that is pronounced. So, we'll go ahead and get a claim there. I'm not going to bother starting this war until the next video. I don't normally like to start wars right at the end of a video. Again, remind me when my truce is up with you. November 82. We've still got 10 years before we can complete that mission. Which is a little bit unfortunate. Because it, I think what we're going to do, actually, is cancel that mission. As much as I would like to wipe them off the map, that's 10 years of sitting around with no mission. So that's not particularly going to help us out here. But, I mean, we can certainly expand and, and grab much more of this. We would like to grab Janzu. Janzu's taken a big chunk out the middle of Yeren. Essentially splitting their country in half. The examinations of 1472. Pupils and examinees have outperformed themselves and almost everyone else at this year's imperial examination. 
The success at the examinations promises good things for the sec Secretariat and for the Empire at large. In fact, it has been suggested that given the excellent results, the official quota for how many can pass is on the low side. The Grand Secretary has approached the Emperor asking for a second round of outtakes to allow more of this gifted generation to join the card race. Only the best are good enough gain 15 meritocracy, or we certainly need more loyal administrators. Um, I think we're actually going to take the mandate. That takes us up to 75, so we're now getting close. We're getting to that point. We are still making some, aren't we? Yeah, we are still producing a little bit here. So it's going up slowly, but we'll soon be able to reform Seaban, and that will give us that trade efficiency and the extra diplomats. After that, it's monthly autonomy change. After that, it's cheaper core creation cost, and after that, it is extra monarch admin power. Cool. Surprised there's only five reforms. Because like the HRE have a lot more stuff than that. So I'm surprised that there isn't more to it. Is there anything else that we can build? I mean, we have taken some additional... Um, we have taken some additional provinces. Still nothing that gives us a huge amount of taxation benefit here. So I think what I'm interested in doing instead then is getting some of these which will give us some more manpower. An extra 875 men and an extra 500 men there. I'm not going to go too overboard because, of course, we're still nowhere near our manpower cap anyway. Although having a higher manpower cap does actually mean you regenerate your manpower more quickly because the amount of manpower you generate each month is a percentage of your uh, max manpower, essentially. So more max manpower equals um, more men each month, essentially. Doesn't look like these factions are actually growing. Lingyuan only has 1.8%, and even though moving you in there means that you actually have a little bit of... Um, what I'm tempted to do is split you in half, move the half in here with the leader, and that actually might be enough to uh, get rid of that faction completely. What are we like on force limit, by the way? We are still below by 7, but I think that's fine for now. Uh, we can have another ship, so we might as well go ahead and add another light to the navy there. We can get a Diplotech. Let's go ahead and grab it. Puts us ahead of time. And that gives us the um, trade efficiency bonus and reduces our corruption as well. Admin's a little bit behind, of course, because we did keep bumping stability, but it'll be worth it for the prosperity. How are we prospering around near the capital? Have we got any prosperity growing here? So we've got no devastation. Prosperity is getting there. Currently at 30%. And there's a 65% chance each month that it'll increase by one. Also, religion. How are we doing with this harmonizing? We're at 90%. Of course, the harmony is at one. So it really sort of slows everything down. But we are sort of getting there. We've got a lot of places. Well, religious unity is not particularly high at the moment. So probably do want to go ahead and get a few more conversions done where we can. As expected, moving that army into that province has caused um, the Changsheng Separatists to start to die down. So if we can go and do that with some of the others, we might be able to eliminate them completely. But that will be something for another video. I'm going to end things there. Thanks a lot for watching, guys. Hope you are still enjoying EU4 as Ming. I'll see you on the next video. And until then, goodbye for now.